Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be covering rental of a self-help moving vehicle along with the car dolly trailer to drag your car and I hope this information is official and useful to you. As you can see I am renting a Penske truck rental. This is supposed to be 16 feet. I think you have to get at least that size. It's a F350 Ford vehicle. I don't know what that means as far as engine size, but I know it's got at least a 5.2 liter engine or something like that. Or maybe a 7 liter because this thing is strong. I have also rented the car dolly and this is post pandemic. So as you know, most things are pushed online. You could go online, go to their website or any website that you choose to rent a vehicle from, check their availability and then schedule your size vehicle and your pickup. As you see from my video, I'm a little bit of a, I guess, getting into the mature age fellow. I've been married for 35 plus years. Me and my wife has accumulated a lot of stuff. Man, it's, it's sad, a lot of stuff. Plus I do uh, automobile restoration stuff. So I've collected a lot of things along with that over the years. And supposedly this truck will move a three bedroom home. Man, we had a two bedroom apartment and this truck is packed. Let me go ahead and show you what we packed into it. So if you're somewhat of a minimalist, that might work for you for a three bedroom home. But if you got a lot of stuff, like we've accumulated a lot of stuff, as you can see, I don't even have all of my stuff in here and I'm loaded. So. And this is not stuff that I got out of storage somewhere. This was stuff that was just jammed in our apartment. I threw away two small dumpsters worth of stuff in this move. So if you got a lot of stuff, get you the next size up than they recommend. If you don't have a lot of stuff, you live a little bit minimal, then this may be sufficient. If you live really frugal, like a minimalist, then you can size down. So. Just want to start off there. After you decide what size vehicle you're going to select, select that on the website, enter the zip code. Sometimes you may know the location and you may not see the equipment there. They will deliver the equipment there for you. You don't even know it's happening. You get to the location, your truck is there. If you're getting a car dolly or car towing trailer, or any other kind of trailer that will be there as well so don't worry about the location you select you let them worry about that they will deliver it one thing I learned several years ago they do supply and demand pricing so if you're in an area that the demand for these rental vehicles is high you're gonna have a higher price if you're not in one of those areas and you're delivering to an area that the demand is high your price will probably be lower. So I've had situations where I've rented their equipment and I've found out that one place was lower than the other. I just go to the next town or two towns over and get my vehicle and then go ahead and use it and turn it in where my destination is or close to my destination and sometimes save pricing. I have seen pricing three times as high. Not so much on trucks, mostly trailers and stuff like that, but you can save hundreds of dollars on a truck rental if you maybe venture out uh, a town or two, 20 to 50 miles, which may be worth the extra drive. That's up to you. When you pick up your equipment, take your time looking it over. I missed a couple of dings on this vehicle. I caught this one, somebody bumped it. But you want to make sure that you have nicks, scratches, dents, things like that identified. A thing is, 
dents up on top of the unit, dents around here, people banging up doors. You just want to look at your inspection sheet and make sure that it has all the damage listed on there. Now, this vehicle is relatively new. It's only got 22,000 miles on it, so it was pretty clean. Inside the back, I didn't look good in there. It has these wooden planks that your stuff could bump up against all the way up the side of the truck. One of those is broken. I failed to note that on my sheet. I hope they don't ding me on it. Most of your newer vehicles have a backup camera. This one, the backup camera, is incorporated in the rear view mirror. I really don't like using those things. I've been driving too long, too many thousands of hours and miles without it. I can't judge those things, so I don't trust them. If you're used to it, that's great. Trucks of certain size, they have the ability to tow cars and other trailers. I've seen a guy with one of these and he had a trailer that was supposed to hold up to two rooms behind it. A lot of stuff there. But anyway, you want to use their guide, their instructions, and possibly, if necessary, go to one of their rental centers and they may even hook the stuff up for you. If you pick up your truck at a place like I did, I picked up mine at a storage facility they would not help me connect the equipment so be aware of that if you need help connecting the equipment make sure you're renting the equipment from one of the rental services locations I made a mistake this time I did not have the help I needed to pack out of my place I underestimated the time it would take me to fill this truck up it took me three days to get the truck loaded I lost time three days a long time I rented the truck Friday loaded some stuff up I thought I was leaving Saturday loaded some stuff up Sunday still didn't get done and here it is Monday and wow finally got the truck loaded took me three full days you don't want to waste all that time so make sure your place is ready to load up before you go get your equipment as with any vehicle when you start the vehicle just put the key in it this one is still standard key start it up the vehicle is idling high you let the vehicle idle until the idle drops all of the vehicles to my knowledge are clean vehicles they don't want to take the chance on people pumping diesel in them so anyway, you start the vehicle, you let it idle till you see the idle drop, and then you can start driving. You don't have to wait 5, 10 minutes, nothing like that. See the idle dropping? I'm ready to go. While the vehicle is parked, if you want to sync your phone to the stereo system so that you can listen to your music off your phone, talk to people off your phone hands-free, you turn the system on, you press this phone button, add device, you push this for OK, then it says search for for your audio you can also see if there's other Bluetooth devices connected which I found there was I couldn't add mine because it was too many connected so I turned this knob and went to Bluetooth devices I pressed that button for OK then it says add a device and I could see other people's devices in there so I hit that and then I turn the knob and then I could delete that device so now I can add mine so you can go in there and delete all the other devices then you make sure your Bluetooth is on you click add a device and then you let it search for connect and all that stuff so I already synced mine so that'll get your phone synced vehicles now warmed up the idle dropped a little bit more now I started driving. First thing that I noticed when I started driving, the vehicle performed with a lot of power. It really didn't feel like it was under any stress or strain at all. Now, when I got on the interstate, I started driving along and I started getting chimes. Sounded like a slot machine. So I started looking around looking for where, what I was winning. Couldn't figure it out. 
the vehicle has a lane departure warning system. It does a funny chime and a beep. I'll let you hear it when you're crossing lanes if you did not put on your turn signal. So don't let that alarm you. Nothing's going wrong. It's just lane assist, lane departure warning. If you are towing a vehicle, after you get the vehicle started, let me start it back up here to show you what I'm going to do. You look over here and it says if you're towing or hauling, you should push this button and make sure that you get a towing notification vehicle light up in your dash. So I'm towing, I push this button, and when I push that button, you'll see the light light up in the dash next to the P. You see that? That's how it's supposed to be when you're towing. I don't know what it does. The lights worked even when I didn't have that pushed, but for some reason, that may help the computer for the transmission respond differently because you got additional weight. Cars, trucks, whatever you're towing. Now, another thing I noticed is that it has some screens up here. Just a forward system. You can navigate that stuff through there. And distance to empty seems to be working fine. I got as much as 10 miles to the gallon. I don't know how big the fuel tank is. I'm about to go fill it up, find out. Be aware these things can take a lot of gas, consume a lot of gas. So I reset my trip. I did 291 miles, 10 miles to the gallon. So we could calculate that out, see how many gallons I burn. Since it's 10 miles to the gallon, that would be 29.1 miles. I'm going to have to pump about 30 gallons in this thing to fill it up. So you're looking at almost $90. Everything else in the vehicle seems to work fine. I did use the cruise control. You turn it on and off here. When you push that button, you get a little notification there. Let you know that the cruise control is there. You get that little light there. And then as you're driving along, you push the set button. It'll set the cruise control, maintain the speed for you. As you can see here, the vehicle has USB charging point. Standard USB, and that may be an Apple port there. This port charges while the vehicle is off, which is nice. Here at the gas station, I like to find stations close to the freeway. I'm pumping gas. It says on the cap that it can do E85 or gasoline. Then it says referred to the owner's manual. I don't know. I don't run E85. So I'm pumping unleaded gasoline. We're rolling right along 22 gallons. And you make sure you got a place with the clearance. They'll have the clearance marking. And inside the windshield of the vehicle, it says you need at least 10 foot six inches of clearance or you'll hit the top of the truck so you want to make sure you don't do that this thing is so high i guess they didn't have to mark it so make sure you just get enough clearance for the trailer and everything you're doing you can get in you can get out there's not a lot of hilly terrain around if at all possible don't pull into a gas station that it'll look like it'll be difficult to get in and out of especially if you're towing. So there I am, $85.88. I pumped 31 gallons, and it said that I had 55 miles to go before I was empty. I don't normally pump odd numbers, so I round it up to the round number. I stop, I don't keep trying to fill it up. You don't want to damage the purge system in the vehicle. While you're driving, if you get to 50 miles to empty, like you see there, 47 miles empty, the whole screen fills up with a warning that you're 50 miles to empty. So once you hit OK, it drops to that little gauge up there near the top. I'm about to get gas in a few miles, so I don't know if I'll get another big warning or not. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website.
And if you have any questions, leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.